Hey everyone, happy Friday once again. Uh, if you'll notice, I'm not at home. I am out, I'm out in the world. So uh, Joe and I took a little trip out to Orlando, Florida, and we are at another bar. This is category five. Uh, so this is our very first collaboration video that we're doing with our friends here, uh, Dimitri and Mary. And this is their home bar called Category 5. And this evening, we are gonna make a cocktail that's called a Three Dots and a Dash. Uh, so we're gonna talk to you guys a little bit about the history of the cocktail. We're gonna talk to you about the ingredients that we're gonna use tonight. Um, and then we're gonna mix it up and we'll see what happens from there. So I wanna introduce you guys to my good friend, Dimitri. Hello. Hello. Good to see you again. Thank you for having us. It's very exciting. It's our first collaboration. We're very honored that you guys chose us. Well, we're glad to have the rum travelers actually out traveling with us and enjoying our bar for a change. And we love having people over and friends over. And I know a lot of you out there have been here and enjoyed it with us. So sit back okay. and enjoy a great time. Uh, so before we get into the cocktail, can you tell us a little bit about your bar? Like why the name Category 5? Well, to, I guess put it nicely, living in Florida, you know, hurricanes are pretty commonplace here. And a thing happens here, it's quite magical. When people come here, it's like a category five hurricane. People <laughs> do get destroyed and hence the name category five. It just, it seems to work out and that's one of our cocktails we make as well. So just uh, people and debris everywhere, huh? Yeah, pretty much so. Most, <laughs> mostly people and empty rum bottles, but there you go. Yeah, we're yeah. always here restocking, so it's okay. I think, I think we've been here for uh, just about two hours and I can feel the effects of the category five already. It's, it's awesome. <laughs> Uh, so in your bar, Dimitri, like what, what's one of your favorite rums or a couple of your favorite rums? What do you like to have? We've got some amazing things behind us here. Yeah. You know, there, there's a number of things we like here. We've learned through a lot of the rum classes around and the rum tastings, you know, what we like and, you know, what we don't like as much. But what we found out, we've got some high-end rums, some uh, Appleton Estate Joy. Very, very nice rum. The flavor profile is just exquisite as you would expect from a higher rum, the ambassadors, but also down to some things here, like we have a Virago, which is here from the States. It's a blended rum. It's really got a great profile. It's a good taste. And hopefully there'll be some more of this around to get for other people here soon. It's just a nice treat from the guys up from the, uh, the rum liais up at the Richmond Rum Society. Awesome. Very cool. Yeah, lots of good stuff back here. Yeah. Just we're kind of known, we do have a number of people come by here, and if you're familiar with the rum tastings they do at the Rum Fest and at Hukilau, they have a thousand dollar rum tasting where if you want to have to buy the rums, it'd be a thousand dollars for you to buy them and try them. But we have a lot of people over friends that, you know, we do the thousand dollar rum tastings here for friends that really turns out to be a good time. And Very hopefully cool. we can make it to the end on them somewhat. So. And I'm sure it gives you an opportunity to introduce something to somebody who's never tried that particular rum. It's, something, it's a chance to, for other people to, to try things that you've discovered, that you enjoy. Absolutely. And they maybe have never come across it before. Yes, and that's, that's part of the reason we do it. We're fortunate that we're able to do this for friends and such, that we enjoy having people over and letting them try things that maybe they're not able to get something like this new grove they made 261 bottles of that it wasn't available in this country we got it in london mm -hmm. there's things like that you know Kearney, <laughs> which is from you know trinidad they've been out of business for almost 20 years now mm -hmm. it's it's another one that's right up that most people won't ever get a chance to get so we love having people over trying it enjoying it and as you can see on the other side there we got a nice humidor stacked up a lot of our <laughs> friends like rum and cigars you know that party happens outside here and mm -hmm. It turns into really a good evening. So yeah, very cool. We, we love do, doing that for everybody. Of course, we do a similar thing at our house. We yeah. break down, uh, you know, bring down rums that maybe somebody's never seen before because we like to go outside the country to the Caribbean, yeah. to Hawaii, to anywhere we can find something new that isn't sold exclusively or in the U.S. It's exclu yeah. sold exclusively in the Caribbean or wherever we're traveling. So it's an opportunity for somebody to try something that maybe they've never seen before, never even exactly. heard of before. So yeah. it's really kind of cool that's you know that's sharing what, your experience and your rum absolutely that's part of being a rum liaison. that's a thing that we really impress on and push on people is a chance to try something maybe you haven't yep you know we've got friends that have 800 bottles of rum in their collection doesn't mean they have everything and if you bring mm -hmm. up something yeah. they haven't had it impresses them 
and it gives them a chance to try mm -hmm. something else that they haven't otherwise tried. And it's, it's a great feeling as well to turn somebody on that's really an expert in the field. So Yeah, that's, that's a good point. It's just because you have an extensive collection doesn't mean you've experienced every kind of rum that's available out there or every of type not. of expression from every particular producer. You know, exactly. somebody might have expressions that are only available in Italy or in London or, you know, you can only get uh, in uh, Fiji, for example. You Correct. know, you have to, you know, keep that in mind that these expressions may not be accessible at all in the U.S. And when you bring something back like that, it's kind of a, a neat experience being able to try something different. Absolutely. And, and your friends that really do enjoy rums. It's really great to see the expression and the happiness on their face that it does bring. As you know, mm -hmm. rum brings a lot of people together, and Absolutely. this is another yeah. chance to do it for everybody. Mm -hmm. So Yeah. So tonight we're doing a cocktail. <laughs> and we are. Yeah, so let's talk it's... about uh, Three Dots and a Dash. Uh, we chose this cocktail tonight. Um, it's one that Joe and I aren't super familiar with. I think right. maybe I've had probably one at Hookie Lao that I don't remember, right. you know, because that's how Hookie Lao goes. Exactly. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a classic tiki cocktail. It was invented by uh, Don the Beachcomber, like right, right. after World War, World and, uh, War II. Approximately, they're thinking 1945, 1946, hence three dots and a dash, V for victory. Mm -hmm. yes. And of course, that had to be been after VE Day or Pearl Harbor, so that would have been 1945. Okay. So it's that time frame, you know, from the godfather of tiki. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, so like Dimitri said, if for you guys that don't know Morse code, like not all of us are military, have a military background. I certainly don't, um, sadly. Uh, but yeah, so the, um, the three dots and a dash uh, symbolizes a V, right? Correct. Like Morse code. Yes, it does. And again, for victory. And for it was, victory. You know, I guess we won that one, right? Did we win yeah, that one? Yeah, I think we did. <laughs> yeah, one of them that we won. We haven't won many since. But it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's a, it's a, it's a really, it's a, it's a, fairly easy drink to make if you get the right things the complexity of it it really when you blend the proper ingredients together something that was as close to original to the recipe back in the 40s because to be honest the rums that were around are no longer around no and <laughs> the, the the recipes were guarded and secret mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and what happened is allegedly the story goes one of don's bartenders from almost 40 45 years when he died his the gentleman's nephew found his recipe book oh, wow. and yeah. passed this around and got to Beach Bum Barry, mm -hmm. who everybody's familiar with that of uh, Latitude 29 down, down in New Orleans. Orleans. Yep. Oh, yeah. And he happened to share this recipe and I found it and was able to put it together from there and do his version with what he felt were the best rums of today that would match up to what we had, you know, 60, 70, 80 years ago. And it's been a hit at the bar here, Category 5. We go through a lot of this right here, believe me. We, <laughs> yeah. I'll bet, yeah. You guys nice. have done some uh, some room parties with this drink, yes? At, yeah. Uh, various tiki. So uh, for you guys that are not in the tiki uh, community, tiki, community tiki, tiki world, yeah. we have these conventions. Uh, we really only have ever been to the, the one that's here in Florida, which is called Correct. the Hookie Lao. There's one in California called tiki, tiki Oasis. Oasis. Uh, maybe we'll get to go this year. We'll see. This year's crazy. Um, yeah. But yeah, so these uh, sometimes these events, there's an opportunity for uh, people to host room parties. So they take their hotel room and they completely transform it. It does not look like a hotel room anymore. It looks like a little speakeasy bar. Usually the beds are shoved in a closet or out, oh, in, the yeah, hallway out in the hallway or in the next room next yeah, door. All the furniture is moved around and it's decorated uh, to represent a tiki bar from the 60s, 50s, 60s. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of the guys do that. Unfortunately, we're, you know, just being a small mom and pop, basically, yeah. let's call it that, just a home bar. We weren't able to do that, but you know, we did end up blending almost five gallons of cocktail of three mm -hmm. dots and a dash. Yeah, five when the gallons. Yeah. <laughs> when the cocktail's a focus, you don't need the decorations. Yeah, it really That's does. Right. You know, after a bit, you know, just break out, give everybody a souvenir cut from the bar, give them all the unlimited cocktails they want. It's, it makes for a great party and a great Absolutely. time for everybody. And, yes. You know, it's it turned into a great time, and we really were fortunate enough to run into a number of the bartenders that were actually there from around the world that enjoyed our cocktails and said we did a great job and for being a home bar you know it's a real compliment here from professionals that say that so yeah absolutely we're really I proud mean, of that people who make drinks for a living are a good judge of character when it comes to <laughs> tasting a beverage isn't yeah. it yeah i don't think so so <laughs> absolutely it, uh, you know this this drink here it's 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 a complex cocktail it's there's a lot going on with it with the juices the dram that we're going to use uh adding some falernum 
some bitters. So it, it comes out to a, a really nice balanced cocktail, but it's, it's something you're not gonna find at your normal bar mm -hmm. or they're gonna do a different variety because there's a lot of different versions people wanna try. They, they'll wanna throw a cinnamon stick in it. They'll do some other things that weren't in the original, mm -hmm. but hey, that's okay. If it's they, something hey. you like, make it it's okay yeah. and that's just it creativity <laughs> is part of the game you know, absolutely want to you want to come up with something you're going to enjoy to drink and uh you know if you like the original recipe go with the original recipe if not play with it and see yeah. what you enjoy about the cocktail yeah. so you find the baseline for what you like and then from there you can change and do you know i made my wife mary who's from london her own drink it's we saw something like a pyb from trader vic from the 50s and we changed it around with about three or four different ingredients, and I've named it after my wife. It's the Queen of the Reich. And that's something <laughs> only a few people have had that we've had them over here and let them try that. So it's something that we've come up with, which is kind of cool to do. I it's definitely like the Yeah, I guess what we're doing area. after this video. <laughs> no, I know what we're doing, and my back shelf is already feeling the pain. <laughs> well, I, I, saw, I saw Mauritius. I love Mauritius yeah. Rome. So I was like, yes. oh, what do you have there for Mauritius? They're trying to okay. get me to put the tiger ears on, but it's not going to happen, <laughs> folks. So, uh, Dimitri, right. why don't you tell us about the rums we're going to use in the yeah. uh, cocktail? Okay. Well, we've got them here. I'll go ahead and pull them out the bottles we're going to use. Uh, from Martinique, we have a Duquesne et les Sourbois, which is a, again, it's a Martinique agricole rum. Very, very good flavor to this. It's, it's really the base of the cocktail. You do need a Martinique rum for it. And again, Jeff said, this is going to be your closest to what was available 80 years ago to the flavor profile from the original drink. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that one is from Lemonade. <laughs> And uh, Martinique, great, love it. Yes, it is from there. And then the next one we have that we use that I found works good from the same distributor, uh, the Hamilton 86 Demerara Rum mm -hmm. from Guyana. Oh, that's yeah. another one that's called out is specifically in the recipe is a Demerara Rum. Mm -hmm. You have El Dorado and some of the others, you know, that you can use. We choose this. The profile just really works. And again, this is one Jeff said that would work very well with this cocktail. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, if, uh, if any of you turned, tuned into our, one of our previous videos, we did use that rum in a different, another cocktail. So yeah. this is coming back for a second appearance. Oh, yes. Yeah. And again, we have a lot of appearances with us behind us in the back stock. We do go through <laughs> a number of these. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then lastly, a lot of people are familiar with allspice. What we have here is a Hamilton. It's a pimento dram is what it's called. It's another, basically, it's an allspice. But the, again, the taste on this the texture is just a little bit different from other people's, and it works with the cocktail that we use. And that's a rum-based liqueur. It is. Uh, mm -hmm. And I read that the pimento berry is from Jamaica, yes? I believe so. I haven't gotten that far into it. I will buy okay. that for a dollar. But, <laughs> All right. you know, this is, that's again, what the internet tells me. I this the is very little. It's basically a teaspoon, which is just under a quarter of an ounce. Yeah. I use even a little bit less because it's very overpowering. Mm -hmm. I know one gentleman, George, will drink this straight, sometimes just over ice. Which George? Portrait. Oh, really? Jacksonville George. Oh, Jacksonville George. Yeah, so George, George, you've been called out if you tuned in tonight. So. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but again, I did glass at the Hukulau. I did give him a bottle of this because he hadn't been able to get it. So we had when he's left here. George, take it and enjoy. And he's made some drinks with that. Fix it, huh? Oh. So, All right. Angostura bitters. We're going to use those as well tonight. And then again, we have, I used the BG Reynolds Falerna, which is an almond base syrup. A lot of people make their own at home. Me personally. I don't use it. Let me put this right back here. Uh, I don't make it. I just don't have the time between mixing cocktails. Yeah, Solarium and is hard to make, right? Like, mm -hmm. it's a process. You know, it is, but again, like a lot of people are. Like, Orshad. People have time to do this. People are creative. Mm -hmm. I'm not that guy between work, boating, and being here at home, cooking. I just don't have time to do that, I especially when you're going to buy something like this, a big bottle that's going to last for quite a while. And, yeah. and these are the experts, right? Like they, Yeah, they, they are. They, I, they do a great job on it. I have a number <laughs> of their syrups in, that, in the refrigerator. I probably have five different ones in there. So. Yeah, so we Good. use the Velvet Falerna from yeah. Barbados. So it's quite a different product, though, because that's clear. This it is. is. And this is, this is a thick syrup. You'll see yeah, when it pours yeah. out. I yeah. mean, that's very thick. So, again, the process is between them. When I saw the other, it's like... That doesn't look like the Florida Mine no, at all. Very different. And I haven't tried it. Well, I'm gonna, am I going to buy a bottle? Absolutely. Yes. See how it works with some cocktail. It might enhance and change the profile a little bit, like changing some of the rums up will do the mm -hmm. same thing. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, we're going to be using a honey syrup, which is basically, I use a 50 fix, 50, 50 mix of honey and water. Okay. Take it, mix it up, keep it refrigerated. It will last, well, it doesn't last us that long, but it does last a while. <laughs> 
If you uh, aren't drinking it on a regular basis, you can uh, refrigerate exactly. it and it'll now, last a while. Now, do you have to heat this to mix it or you just pour the water in? I, well, you can. I normally heat the water okay. and put it in there and shake the daylights out of it for a couple minutes. All right. Put it in the refrigerator. You don't want to pull it up before I use it. Just that. Yep. It's ready to go. It's all pretty, it's mixed up again. It breaks the consisting of the viscosity of it down with the hot water so you don't have to worry about it. Right. Some people would use a two to one water over the uh, the honey. I like a one to one, 50 50. A little sweeter, yeah. Yeah, it just, again, it works for our palate. So. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. Yeah, we've done um, we've done the uh, grenadine homemade grenadine and the homemade uh, cinnamon uh, syrup, which you know you boil down the sugar and water and then add the cinnamon sticks. And Correct. Everything. And it's but, the same thing. You can adjust the ratio to your palate. Yes, like, to like what to works things, for you exactly. So That's a lot easier. <laughs> you know, it really is. It takes a whole. I have one of these baseline. We have a couple of these in the pantry. When this gets done, pour half of it yeah, in, hot water, go. put it in, shake it. It's about less than a minute. Yep, there Beat you that go. cooking it yourself. You can't. <laughs> right. That's you know, in the refrigerator, I do have some, uh, the three dots and a dash that we'll be putting on this drink that my lovely assistant, Mary, is going to be bringing us here in a moment that I'd forgotten earlier. But again, the other things, we have two more components to this, fresh squeezed lime juice and fresh squeezed orange juice. We got one of those over there too. One little orange there. And... <laughs> You know, this is, it's pretty simple. You got three, six, eight ingredients you're putting in here. It's not like a jet pot where you're putting 11 in. It's not like a- We don't want to go crazy, you know? <laughs> sure we do, but not tonight we won't. <laughs> well, we've, we've talked about it in other videos too. What's the importance of using fresh squeezed juice versus something you buy in a store? First of all, we'd never use something you buy in a store. Right. right. The, what you get out of the freshness is, again, it just enhances the cocktail. Absolutely. If you're going to use better booze, why not use better ingredients for everything else? You know, you exactly. buy a hamburger, you're not gonna use wilted lettuce and a bad brown tomato. Right. Use something that's fresh, and it, again, it pays its in, in dividends extremely well. It's well worth the it effort. It really affects time. the flavor of the cocktail, because you're Absolutely. getting the fresh flavors. You aren't getting something that's sat in a refrigerator or was from concentrate. Well, and they, these don't have sugar added to them. A lot yes. of the lime juices, orange juice, there's sugar added in there. You don't need any more sugar. There's sweet and, things here. And who knows what else is put in so it'll last a month yeah, in the refrigerator. The preservatives right. and yeah. chemicals. You know, it, it takes again, a minute to squeeze a lime. We do this, you know, 10 ounces of lime will last us a couple days. Yeah. You know, the orange of, juice will last a little bit longer, because we want to make as many orange juice based drinks. A bag of limes is like $3. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, they're getting a lot more money in the, in the lockdowns now. We're, we're yeah, finding out seventy five prices have gone up. Yeah, but you know it is what it is. But it makes a difference. You know, the people have come here. We never batch cocktails for anybody. Mm -hmm. You know, people might. You know, we start having 10, 12, 14 people here. Yeah. It's hard to keep up. It really is. It's a lot mm -hmm. of work oh, yeah. running, finding everybody's taste palate. Hey, let's start with this. Then we'll try this, and then you get people start calling. How about this one we had? Can we try this? And it's really hard to keep up for one guy that's not a professional. Right. Yeah, <laughs> you're not a 10, <laughs> 12 people, and you know, we're starting to run out of this. Guys, let's have dinner, and then it's time to do this back here because I'm out of everything else. It's and on the t on top of that, you're not working for tips. Well, I had a tip once. They said, "Make your drinks faster, or we're going home." So I had to speed it up a little bit. But. Well, without further thir further ado, do you want to start uh, making yeah, the cocktail and kind of walk us through what happens going. here? Absolutely. Let me put on my glasses so I can actually see and not make a disaster. <laughs> Getting serious now, guys. You know, and I, I've always, everybody has the way they mix and put everything in a cocktail. I'm no different from everybody else. I start with the top ingredient on my list. I'll do my Duquesne Subois rum from Martinique. This calls for one and a half ounces. Uh, we're going to be mixing doubles here, so we're going to go with three ounces of this rum. This is why we hang out with this guy. <laughs> More is always better. Absolutely. And Dimitri, if you can't find this particular rum, do you have a uh, suggested backup for it? You know, I would use the El Dorado 12, which I have right here. It's a Demerara rum in Guiana. The smell, the taste is very similar. Well, for the uh, for the Duquesne. Yes, for the Duquesne. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Even though it's not uh, agricultural. No, no, I, my mistake. I just this. <laughs> I, I just like, said of the Hamilton eighty six. Are you sure? Okay. Are you sure? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I, the agricultural, which is a very specific. Correct. It taste. is. I'm sorry. I have not used anything else. I have been able to source this. You buy that by the case. Yeah. Yeah, I buy it by a case. You get twelve bottles at once. You're not going to mm -hmm. run out. Right. And 
you know, luckily last night I found somebody else I can get it from with free shipping. So oh, I got a new, oh, wow, it's nice. time known to case. I'm down to two bottles after that one. So, well, yeah. if somebody couldn't find the Duquesne, maybe they could use a Nissan. Well, Nissan, or, there's an Elise you, Dubois. Yeah, you could, they have the same there. And it, it's again, it's from Martinique. So I believe if I'm correct. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. Mm -hmm. it will have a similar profile. It, it'll be a little different. You know, this is a, you know, it's basically a $30 bottle of rum. It's not mm -hmm. expensive, yep. Yep. and there are places here in Orlando you can get it now. There's you know mm -hmm. places down in Sarasota, Tarpon Springs. Uh, online you can find it. Yeah. Uh, so it's something that's readily available, and it's it's again it's a it's a must for us in our bar. There's always three bottles in here. Like I said, this week could be ordering another case. So. I think we're going to be ordering some as well. So yeah, it's a good one to have. Next, we're going to do the Hamilton 86 Demerara Rum. It calls for one. Uh, excuse me. Half an ounce, it's a three to one mixture. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna go ahead and do one ounce of this. I don't use jiggers, a lot of people use jiggers. I don't like leaving my bottles open. Oh, very good. <laughs> That's what we like to do. Just we yeah. do the and and the, you know, the smell of this, again, oh, yeah. it's just, mm -hmm. it's, it's a very, Delicious. very nice rum. It's Everybody, got that rich molasses yeah. mm -hmm. exactly. uh, aroma to it. Now we're gonna put in the pimento dram next. Again, it calls for a teaspoon, which is about a quarter of an ounce. For a double, I'm gonna put just over that because I don't want this to overpower the cocktail. So I'll put it just about between, just under a half and a half. quarter. So yeah, very take funny. a whiff of that. Like I, we, have, we just got a oh, bottle yeah. of the pimento. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it, it is. It's like an allspice. Exactly. Oh, it is. Oh, yeah. yeah. You put it on your tongue, it's going to numb it. I mean, oh, at least I... it does for me. I... Very George, similar to George, bitters. unfortunately, you, you drink this by, your, by itself? Like, that's crazy. George Ooh. is more of a man than I'll ever be. Wow, so. right? <laughs> than all of us. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> you know, after that, we have that. Now you're going to put in equal amounts of your honey syrup, your, your lime, and your orange juice. It calls for one excuse me, one half ounce each. It's the same as the 86 Hamilton. Uh, so we're gonna put an ounce each in. One down. Is that a uh, local honey out there? Or? It's a, yeah, it's local from Publix. Uh, local from Publix, yes. <laughs> yeah, it's the Florida honey. Golden Blossom Honey, <laughs> premium pure US honey. I've never been a honey person. Every time I pour this, I like it, it goes over. I take wipe my finger and it's like, it is so sweet. I'm not uh, a honey guy, but I love that. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure any large container of honey will do the job. I'd imagine. I haven't tried any other. <laughs> Again, I'm, I'm the a train of thought. If you find something that works for you, just stick with it. Roll stick with it. With it. Yeah. Why am I going to kind of try to change around? I do that with other cocktails. Yeah. This is such a classic. Who am I to sit there and argue with Don Beach? True. I'm, yeah, I, I, I would say he's the expert among yeah. you know, the three of us versus him. I give the, I'd give the nod to him. Yeah, I would too, though. I think we're living a better life right now. <laughs> well, Florida stuff is a little more open right now than New Orleans stuff, although it looks like New Orleans is coming along. I hear yeah. they're, they're Let's getting there. Let's hope so. They're getting there. I saw. Now, for the cocktail, it calls for a quarter ounce of Flarenum. Very little bit. We're going to, of course, be going a half since we're doing a double. Right at a half ounce. Add that in there. My favorite always... Nice. Add a dash of Angostura bitters. There's a lot of bitters out there. Trinidad does more bitters than anybody else in the world. Yep. I'm sorry, this is their, probably their main export now yeah. since they're no longer in the rum business there mm -hmm. so much. So yeah. Angostura bitters, you can buy that at your grocery stores, liquor stores, order it anywhere. It's, it's in Publix, it works out great. Calls for a dash, two, and I actually go in one extra just because I like yeah. bitters. Yes. Mm -hmm. and what we'll do here, Happen to have some ice here from Chick-fil-A, some pea ice. Put See, about a cup. Dimitri has fancy ice. We don't have fancy ice at our bar. He goes the extra mile and gets the really nice ice. Yeah. So we went today it. and we got turned away. Thank God we have plenty in here. You got turned away? They said no ice for you? They had no ice. They don't do ice at that. The Chick-fil-A up uh, by us. Unfortunately, went the other way. Yeah. We can put it in a salad container in cups. Thank you, but no thank you. We want like 20 pounds of ice. Right. <laughs> okay. I'll just go ahead and put it together in a shaker. You know, give it a shake. Go ahead and crack it. Go ahead and pour it. And let's talk about and it. 
Lastly, talk about. I was gonna say, let's talk about what you're garnishing with here. Yeah. I am trying to get some prawns <laughs> off the <laughs> the pineapple here. I always go with three, kind of like three dots. We'll do that on each cocktail. This is the world's simplest garnish. You literally just pluck the fronds right off of a pineapple and you've got this like, they, beautiful exotic looking garnish. And they stick. It, they they stay look up. good. Now we did this ahead of time. Three Luxardo cherries and a piece of pineapple, three dots and a dash. We do have the picks from three dots and a dash in Chicago. Thank you, Kurt and Kevin. Those are little skulls, if you can't yeah, they see are. that. They're little, little skulls tiny on skulls. There. They're the coolest picks. We have some of those, I think, from Hukilau. <laughs> and a couple of bamboo straws. Beautiful. And there you are. Thank you. Enjoy. Let's give that a taste yeah. there. Cheers. Cheers. That is delicious. Oh, Thank yum. You. Excellent yum. job, sir. Thank you very much. The cool thing about these tiki cocktails, this one in particular, it's it's so well balanced. Like it's got yes. all these spices in there. It's the rum is there, although I, I must admit it's you know, you, you don't feel like you're drinking a No, you don't. Really you can heavily, get trouble with that very easily. Yeah, like yeah. you could just you We've know. had a lot of trouble at category five <laughs> with this drink. Sure. <laughs> but it, this is also a great drink for a beginner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or a gentleman that's been drinking this, or a woman that's been drinking this, and their other half isn't a big drinker. This is a great, I guess, starter cocktail. Mm -hmm. It is. It's an enabler to get them onto other things later. Yeah. After a couple of these, opens up the mind to a lot of other things. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Open up yeah, your hurricanes, your 151 swizzles. Mm -hmm. They'll be right on it next. So. Well, no, it's just uh, it's got that classic tiki cocktail flavor of the the spices, the cinnamon, the you know the pimento dram with the allspice yeah. is where a lot of that's coming. Yeah, from. yeah. Absolutely. You can taste the, like just smelling it. Like I can taste that. That is. You can taste that. One of the main things. The Martinique rum as well. Its yeah. signature is so obvious that. Again, the blend of all this together, it's just, it was one of those that's done right. And you know, that's why it's been around as long as it has, and it's still very popular for those that make it. So, yeah. And that's something that's really interesting about the uh, agricole rums. Okay. A lot of people will say they don't like agricole rums because they've tried them on their own, but then they'll yeah. try a cocktail with an agricole rum and say it's the best cocktail they've ever had in their yeah. life. Of course. Exactly. It's, it's all about how it's presented, how it's mixed, how what the ingredients are. You might have somebody who doesn't like a specific spirit at all, you mix the right drink, and all of a sudden they're they're they, Yeah, they can't yeah. believe that they was what they're put in there. And, and that happens yeah. a lot with the tiki cocktails. People would be surprised. How many people drink 151? Most of the cocktails we make here, yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course you do. Uh, people. Uh, but we're used to the 169 rum, too. Yeah. So. That's right. <laughs> but the, the 151 is a staple mm -hmm. in, in the tiki world for the mm -hmm. cocktails. So a lot of that is being done, and a lot of it's drink. And it, again, it's something you don't taste, but it's something you'll feel. Yes, yeah. For sure, yeah. It, it's a it creeper. sneaks up on you really quick. <laughs> yeah, it does. Well, it's funny. Like, so you sit in these cool tiki bars. It's very dark in there, and you're yeah. sitting on a little chair, and there's music playing. It's very relaxing, and you drink these cocktails. And then, you know, maybe you have to go to the restroom. Maybe you need to just get up and do something. And you go to stand up from your bar stool, and you're like, uh oh, okay. oh you, dear. You yes. think you're a grog grotto with the sinking stool? It's like, <laughs> yeah. what is right. hitting? Whoa, there was 151 in that cocktail, yeah. wasn't there? Well, you're, you're finding out nowadays a lot of the the tiki bars are coming they become really professional and good and they know the effects on people and they're serving you water before you even sit down now yeah. here's a glass of ice water drink the water it enables you to drink a lot more you don't get dehydrated mm -hmm. and i promise you in the morning you won't feel nearly as bad well it's they, one of the tricks that a lot of people even don't see do. some places yeah. bringing out the chilled bottle of water and setting it on the bar so you can refill it as many times mm -hmm. as you yeah. need to without waiting for the bartender to come back yeah Absolutely. suffering it, bastard here in orlando there that that's the first thing you see when you go into that bar yeah. that you sit down at the bar or at a table they bring out the big carafe of water and they're yeah. like here you mm -hmm. go here's yeah, the next, menu i'll be back in 10 minutes Drink yeah water. And <laughs> next thing i know there's all these drinks coming and forget about the water <laughs> like, oh, even oh, there. Yeah. Like, now yeah. it's a 40 mile drive home this is gonna be good thank god for uber yeah i mean suffering bastard is a little bit of drive from here we're being next to disney yeah. so it's at the far north end of town it's a long way but a great bar oh i love mm -hmm. it the the yep. tom did a great job inside of there the bartenders are just you know they came over someone from uh what is it bottles and bitters or bitters and bottles or no bitters, bitters and brass, brass. Uh, mm -hmm. bitters bitters and and brass. brass. correct and those exactly. guys are nailing the craft Absolutely. they've really done a great job for us here so we're yeah. really proud to have them. well speaking of tom i'll do a little quick plug for you guys that are uh, hanging out tonight just watching all the live videos uh magical tiki meetup is doing a video tonight at nine o'clock ah. uh tom and carrie uh from magical tiki meetup uh they're pairing up with jupiter jones uh and they're gonna do a 
whole, they have like a Quarantiki Chronicles uh, right. show that they do. Yeah, we so. have jumped in on uh, those before, so yeah. they're, they're a lot of fun to do. So tune into that after you guys are done with us. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you very much for having me. No, thank Absolutely. you for I'll having me. I'll, is... I'll let you all finish off, and all right. I'll stand behind. Thank, <laughs> thank you so you. much. Thanks, Dimitri. You're do welcome. we have any uh, any questions, any, any feedback? Yeah, well, you guys want to ask anything? We've had a comment that Dimitri rocks, which we knew. So that's why we, we're here. We <laughs> absolutely want we want to open it up to questions. If anybody has any questions, drop them in the chat. Um, and while we're waiting for the questions to roll in, we want to thank Dimitri and Mary for opening up their home yeah. to us to allow us to do the video here and for doing the demonstration of the cocktail because it's you know it's great that we get to do this. We have a lot of fun making our own cocktails, but it's not always about us. It's about <laughs> the community of Tiki and the people that are in it. And being able to come to somebody else's bar and see them make a cocktail that we we, we absolutely love, this is delicious, mm -hmm. it, it's just another door open to us to be able to uh, expand what we do and bring somebody else into your homes so you can see how we are all getting through this coronavirus mess of staying at home. Yes. So, uh, yeah, do we have any questions online? Oh, I don't see any right now. No questions? But well, I mean, what questions are there? Just the injury Honestly, of cocktails? Honestly, yeah, I think we covered a lot tonight, so. A lot of information. Um, yeah, I mean, just uh, mix up something at home and uh, enjoy it. Um, just enjoy your friends and your family. And, um, you know, while we're, while we're still stuck at home, use your Zoom meetings, you know, use, yep. use your, your telephone. Virtual happy telephone hours. Telephone if we have those things still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've right. been doing a lot of virtual happy hours and that sort of thing. Uh, but yeah, so we'll go ahead and wrap it up. Uh, we're going to continue our, uh, our libations here this evening at Category 5. Hope you guys enjoy your evening. Yep, stay safe, stay healthy. I'll let Missy sign us off. Had to get one more drink of my cocktail before I said goodbye. All right, so again, thanks, Dimitri and Mary. Uh, Category 5, this is the Rum Travelers in Orlando, Florida this evening, and I hope everyone has... A great night and a great weekend. Thank you guys for tuning in.